Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and it is Friday so we're here with a rant or review video. Today we're going to be reviewing a book that I'm super excited about. It just released and I picked it up with my book of the month box and it was a book that I felt like was super hyped coming into February and that is of course Mame by Jessica George. This book is about a young woman named Maddie who is living in London and she's in her mid-20s and she has basically been stuck at home caring for her father who is in late stage Parkinson's disease while her mom is off in Ghana running a hostel and her brother's off traveling and living his life. So it seems like she's kind of shouldering all the responsibilities and burden in her family while everyone else is kind of doing what they want. And because of this, she's never really lived a life that a normal 20 year old would or a 25 year old would. She hasn't really gone out and partied. She's still a virgin. She's never dated. She just really like in some ways is super mature, like in the responsible aspect of it, but in the social development aspect seems very immature and naive. And her mom calls and says she's coming back from Ghana that, you know, the situation with the hostel has changed a bit. So she's going to be in London for a year. And Maddie takes this as a sign that it's time for her to move out and start putting herself first. She's going to make changes. She's going to get a better job. So she's having like some issues with the job that she's currently at. There's some racism and um, just not cool behavior going on. So she decides she's going to pursue a different job in an industry that she actually wants to be in. She's going to start trying to date. She's going to get a flat with some flatmates. She's just going to do things that she should have probably been doing already, but hadn't because of her caregiving situation. But then as she starts to become independent and make all these changes in her life, a tragedy strikes and it puts everything on pause. Maddie falls into a really severe depression and it's kind of, we, we follow her through this, this journey of depression and wondering if she's ever going to get her life on track. It is a really interesting story and really digs into a lot of, of deep themes and topics. Another thing that I really love about this book is the narrative structure. So this book is told from first person, present tense perspective. And I think that really allows us to get inside of Maddie's head. The fact that we're hearing it in first person is literally telling us how Maddie feels about things, how Maddie is responding to the things that are occurring to her, the people she's interacting with. We never are left in doubt or in question of, of what's going on with her. And it kind of allows the reader to experience things along with Maddie. Another thing that I really liked in this book and that I don't feel like gets discussed enough is that there's a discussion of female sexuality and pleasure in this book. Maddie is at the beginning of the book, a virgin. And when she starts dating, she starts dating a guy. We're gonna get into spoiler territory here. So if you're not interested, it's not a major spoiler, but if you're not interested in having any of the plot spoiled, probably cut off at this point. Maddie starts dating a guy and you know, she's into him and you know, they're dating and it's cool. And eventually she decides that she's gonna have sex with him. This is the very first time. So the first time that she has sex, it's painful. That's, you know, not abnormal necessarily. You know, women do sometimes experience pain the first time they have sex. But what is abnormal is that sex continues to be painful for her. Every time that she has sex with the person that she's with, she's not enjoying it. It doesn't feel good. And he's not really paying attention to that either. Like, I feel like he at some point should be aware that, hey, my partner is not enthusiastically involved. She's just there starfishing and waiting for me to get through this. And this partner of hers is just not even paying attention. He doesn't ever ask her like, hey, does this feel good for you? Oh, this doesn't feel good. Like, let's try something else to make it feel good. He just takes for granted that she's enjoying sex and she really isn't. And it takes her a while to get comfortable enough to tell people, like as she dates new people in the book, it gets, it takes her a while to be comfortable saying like, no, sex doesn't feel good for me. I'm not enjoying it. At least I haven't enjoyed it thus far. And we see this growth for her. Finally, towards the end, she's with somebody that understands her a little bit better. And when it comes to sexuality, he's more interested in actually pleasing her and, you know, taking her needs into mind, not just like using her like he would use his hand. And so I appreciated that that was a, a significant part of this story. I think that all too often people really skip over like sexuality for women and female pleasure because it's an uncomfortable topic, you know, especially like when you get into like romance, like women are always just enthusiastic. It's always amazing. It's never sloppy or messy or embarrassing. 
and the women never have any pain. There's never like discomfort where they have to have a conversation. So I really liked that this book was very real about that. I also liked the exploration of depression in this book. So Maddie obviously hits a point where she's depressed. This tragic thing has happened to her and her whole life is shook and she's feeling a lot of guilt and responsibility and she feels abandoned and like her life is just falling apart and she doesn't initially realize she's depressed it's actually her work and her boss that support her and realize that she's dealing with depression so she's coming in her performance is kind of all over the place her personality seems a little bit unusual her behavior is a little unusual and her boss is like hey we care about you you just went through this big tragic thing and we don't want you to be here if you're not in the place to be here. And, you know, they have these talks with her and reassure her, like, take the time you need for your mental health, which is, that was amazing, first of all, just seeing an employer in, you know, portrayed like they care. That's how it should be, really, is that employers should be able to look at their employees and go, hey, we know that you're normally like a hardworking, communicative person, and all of a sudden we're seeing this significant change after a traumatic event, like, we're concerned about you. So it was refreshing to see that, first of all. And then second of all, you know, they recognize something's wrong and they, they communicate with her and like, hey, we're here for you. How can we help? Do you need more time? And then eventually when Maddie is not really doing what she needs to do to get better, they're like, look, we have a therapist that works for our company. We're going to set you up with appointments for her. And because we understand that you're a black woman, we've made sure that we got you a black female therapist as well, which I thought was just really, really a beautiful scene in general because a, they recognize that she's having mental health issues. B, they give her the space to try to deal with it on her own, you know, because she was being very private about it. C, when she wasn't dealing with it, they gently stepped in and they also were very sensitive to what are potentially her own unique needs. So they got her somebody that's going to understand her from a place that they as white women can't understand her. And I, I thought that was just so beautifully done. I thought that this was really like a shining example of how an employer can support an employee in a difficult time. I also thought it was a shining example of why people struggle with depression for so long because A, people don't realize sometimes that they're depressed, B, they get into a denial phase, and then C, like culturally sometimes people aren't in a position where they feel like they're allowed to be depressed. You know, I have dealt with this with some of my own friends where like the culture they grew up in doesn't recognize mental health issues, doesn't recognize depression, and, and sometimes it takes them a while to like really understand and then come out about it because they feel like they're not going to receive support. And so we see that with Maddie as well. I just thought it was really beautifully done. It was, again, super relatable. This is a word that I'm going to be using a lot in this review, I think. And that's really what it comes down to with this whole book is that even though the main character is from an English Ghanaian background and I'm a white American, like there's just so much that I felt like I could relate to with her story. Um, and within this book and I think that's why so many people are just so crazy for this book is because of that relatability There's something that I think Every single person reading this story could go. Oh, I see a little bit of me in there And one other topic that I really appreciated as well that was in here is that Maddie is a caregiver for her father He has late stages Parkinson's syndrome and she is his primary caregiver She's trying to balance working a job and then coming home and doing all the load of caregiving and it is not portrayed as easy and it's not so first of all, my grandmother passed away from Parkinson's disease when I was about 19 years old. So I know how difficult it is to watch somebody dealing with Parkinson's disease and seeing the decline of their neurofunction and, and watching them trip when they're trying to walk and lose the ability to speak and you know the dementia that comes with it and all these things. So I understand that part of it. And then having helped and participated in caregiving for my mom's parents, both my grandmother and my grandfather, um, participating in their hospice care and stuff. And then during the pandemic, working in elder care in an office, staffing, you know, home health aides and stuff like that, I've really got to see what it's like as a caregiver. And so that's such a difficult responsibility. It's such a difficult job. And then you have somebody like Maddie who is doing her best and receiving like next to no support. And you just, you, you empathize for her. You empathize for the fact that she's young and she's missing out on life. You empathize for the fact that she's dealing with this difficult traumatic stuff with literally no support. You empathize for her dad too, who's like basically going through this incredibly difficult disease and nobody's coming to visit him. It's just him and his daughter all the time. And it's just, it's a tough situation. And I thought that was portrayed really, really well. I thought it was sensitive and delicate 
It didn't get into like trauma porn scenario. It just sort of gives you an understanding of what's going on and it really, you build some sympathy for both of these characters. The only little critiques that I have are, are very minor in the scope of things. My first critique is that her work does this beautiful job of setting her up with a therapist. And we find that her and her therapist have a ton in common. Her therapist also has Ghanaian roots and understands her culturally and everything, which I thought was so beautiful. But we only really see like one therapy session with Maddie and her therapist. We never see like this progression of how she starts to come around to therapy and like use actually go to therapy and wanna participate instead of just, we never really see her going to therapy and actively participating and being happy she's there. It's all, just at the beginning of the journey where she's just like, oh, I don't believe in therapy. I don't need to be here, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I would have liked to see a little bit more interaction with the therapist and her her journey to wellness. I also feel like this did end up, I also feel like this did end in a bit of a neat and tidy way. There's not ultimately a lot of change in several of the main characters that are causing problems. And you think that it's gonna come to a head, like you think that that's gonna be the final crux of the story is that these people have to make changes or Maddie's gonna make changes for them. And instead there's like kind of a twist thrown in that resolves it in a way that doesn't require them to change or grow at all. So Maddie does grow and Maddie, you know, is getting to a healthier, happier place, but the characters that were kind of holding her down aren't really forced to grow or change at all. They're allowed to just still do the same kind of shitty things that they've been doing throughout the book. So that was a little bit frustrating and I thought that this little bit of a twist kind of just smoothed over some of the issues instead of actually allowing the issues to resolve. But overall I'm satisfied with how it ended and and the resolution in the story. I just wish that Maddie maybe would have gotten a little bit more of a satisfactory resolution in, in regards to a couple of these problems. Overall, I rated this book a 4.5. I thought this was very, very solid. I'm super impressed that this is a debut novel. I thought the writing was really good and I can't wait to see what Jessica George is gonna do in the future. If you like this review, hit the thumbs up and comment down below. If you've already read Mame, let me know how you felt. If you haven't read Mame, let me know, is it on your TBR? Are you planning to read it soon? And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss a video. That way we can see each other again. Thank you so much for joining. Bye. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.